Hello. Today we're going to focus on oligopoly, specifically the Stackelberg case. The Stackelberg case is different than other types of oligopoly because we have a two-step game where we have a leader and a follower. The leader first picks their quantity based off of their assumption of what the follower would do, and then the follower picks their quantity afterwards. This means we have two time periods where two different decisions are made. This is different than Cournot, where everybody picks their quantities at the exact same time, and different than Bertrand, where we're trying to undercut based off of marginal costs. This means we're going to have a little bit more math involved with Stackelberg. Let's take a look at this specific question. So in this question, we're given two firms who have identical marginal costs. They both face the same demand curve, and they have a market quantity which is made up of their two quantities combined. We're trying to find their equilibrium price, or the price that they would sell at based on the fact that both are competing in this market. In order to do so, we need to figure out each firm's profit function based off of their position as either leader or follower. We're not exactly told in this question which firm is the leader and which is the follower, but because we have identical marginal costs, it doesn't quite matter who we pick. Let's say, for argument's sake, firm two is the follower in this case, and firm one is the leader. In that case, we should start with firm two's profit function. So I'll write it out. In this case, and in all Stackelberg cases, we're going to be very similar to Cournot at the start of the question, meaning that when we build out our profit function, it should look exactly the same as if we were solving a Cournot problem. So our profit for firm two will be equal to the price that we can sell our units at times the quantity that firm two sells, which should be Q2, and then minus our marginal cost of two times the quantity again that firm two sells. This should be our cost function. So if you need a more general case, that would be P times Q2 minus our cost associated with production for firm two. And then we can boil that down to the marginal cost times the amount of quantity produced by firm two. Going further, we can plug into this equation the price, which should be four minus our equilibrium quantity, which is Q1 plus Q2. And then we're going to multiply by our Q2 here. And then we cannot forget also to subtract our marginal cost and our quantity here. OK, from there, we rewrite our profit function to expand out this negative sign. So we're really saying 4 minus Q1 minus Q2. And then we're going to multiply that by Q2. So Q2 is going to expand it to all of these terms right here. And then again, we subtract out our cost. So expanding further, that's going to be 4Q2 minus Q1Q2, and then minus Q2 squared. And then again, don't forget this minus 2Q2. We can then combine like terms. So we have a 4q2 here, a minus 2q2 here. We can take that and make it 2q2 minus q1 times q2 minus q2 squared. OK, so bear with me. There's going to be a lot of math in this case, but that's all right. We'll work through it. So next, we need to take our derivative of our profit function for firm 2 with respect to quantity 2 to maximize our profit as firm two. Okay, so we're going to set that equal to zero afterwards, but for now we're going to say two minus q1 minus 2q2 is our derivative with respect to q2. And then we're going to set that equal to zero. So we're left with two minus q1 equals 2q2. And from there, we can solve for Q2 by dividing by 2. So we can say 1 minus 1 half Q1 equals Q2. And that's our 
kind of function that we get by maximizing profit for firm two. So conceptually, we can think about this as all the scratch work that firm one does to figure out what firm two will do. So this is kind of firm two's reaction because they're oblivious to what firm one is doing until it's done. So firm one is making the first decision. They have the time to kind of sit there and think about what firm two will do, and they're going to implement that into their strategy. So as such, we can see that exactly in the math. Okay, so we're going to switch over to firm one's production for the rest of this now. So we're going to do the same setup initially. Firm one is going to be, their profit will be price times their quantity minus the cost it takes to produce their goods. We're going to expand that out to be P times Q1 minus, and then we're going to plug in their marginal cost, which is again, two times their quantity, which is Q1. So minus two Q1. And then we can plug in from there. So we can say profit one is equal to our price equation, which is four minus big Q, which is Q1 plus Q2. And then again, never forgetting this cost portion at the end and also to multiply by Q1 on the outside of this price. So if in there, profit one is equal to four minus Q1 minus Q2, all times Q1. And then we're also subtracting out this cost again. Okay. And before we do anything else, what's important is that we're going to take this one minus one half Q1, that's equal to Q2. And we're going to plug it into Q2 right here. So this function, we found this function first so that we can plug it in to this Q2 in this equation. So we're going to say profit one is equal to four minus Q1 minus in parentheses, one minus one half Q1 all multiplied by Q1 and then subtracting two Q1. Notice how we only have one variable now in our equation. Okay, so we're going to say profit one is equal to four minus Q1 minus one plus one half Q1 all times Q1. So I just distributed out that negative sign. And then again, we're attaching this minus two Q1. From there, we can expand out this Q1 to all of these terms. So we can say profit one is equal to four Q1 minus Q1 squared minus Q1 plus one half Q1 squared minus two Q1. From there, we can combine a bunch of like terms. So for instance, we have four Q1 and minus Q1 here. That becomes 3q1. We have negative q1 squared and 1 half q1 squared. So that's just going to be minus 1 half q1 squared. We're just combining the q1 squareds. And then we also have this minus 2q1 again, this cost. So we can also subtract that out and say profit 1 is equal to q1 minus 1 half q1 squared. Okay. And then as always, we're going to take the derivative of this profit function with respect to Q1 and set that equal to zero. So that's going to be one minus Q1 equals zero. So our quantity that firm one produces is one unit. Okay, so we have our quantity that firm one produces. We can plug that back into this equation right here that's highlighted to figure out how much firm two produces. So we're going to say that Q2 is equal to one minus one half times Q1. We found Q1 to be exactly one unit here. So Q2 equals one minus one half times one. So firm two will produce half a unit. Okay, and then finally, we're looking for our price 
that we're selling at in equilibrium. So that means P is equal to, again, if we scroll back up here, P is equal to four minus big Q. So P is equal to four minus Q1 plus Q2. We found Q1 to be one unit and Q2 to be one half. So we can add those together and we can say P is equal to four minus one minus one half, which means P is equal to two and one half, which is also equivalent to five over two, or answer choice A.